Good morning and welcome to Children Ministry Worship. Today we're going to be singing two songs. Uh, the first song we're going to sing is Waymaker, and then the next song we're going to sing is The Heart of Worship. Please rise as we begin worship. Let's sing our first song, Waymaker. That is who you are. 
That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you Next song we're going to sing is The Heart of Worship. When the music fades. When the music fades. All this strip. And I simply come Longing just to bring Something that's a word That will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself it's not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to I'm coming back to you. 
And that concludes our time of inspiration. Please bow down in a word of prayer with me. Heavenly Father God, we want to thank you so much that we have the opportunity to sing to you, to praise you, for you are worthy of all praises. Father, we want to ask for your forgiveness, for we have idolized and prioritized other things that we worship here on earth that has pushed you out of the picture. Father God, I pray that we would know and be convicted that you are our God, our only goal in life, Lord, our sole purpose. And so, Father God, I pray that as we sing these words, that they would be words that come directly from our hearts and not just from our lips. We thank you once again, for blessing us with the opportunity to gather and worship your name. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Good morning, kids, and welcome back to our Sunday Children's Ministry Service. This is our second week where we're going to be talking about what it means to focus our eyes on Jesus. I think that's Excuse oh, me. Hello. Hi, Pastor Steven. Hi. Hi. Um, what are you doing here today? I I have a. Oh wait, this isn't my week. No. I totally forgot. It's like I didn't focus on my calendar or something. So today I actually have someone very special for you, as you can see right here. Uh, someone very important to me and someone very dear to me. Uh, my wife Esther is actually going to be teaching you guys today. So. I want you guys to turn your attention to her, and I'm going to go focus on something else. Bye, guys. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and it's so nice to see you. As Pastor Stephen has just mentioned, um, I am his wife, Esther, and it is with great privilege that I get to come and speak to you guys this morning. Um, on one of my favorite topics in the Bible. This summer, we are looking at what it means to take a closer look and focus on what it means to have faith. If you tune into church last week, you might have remembered Pastor Amy started a new series for this month's teaching. Crazy how we're in June already, eh? We're talking about faith. And as I mentioned earlier, it is truly one of my favorite subjects to talk about. Who can remember what faith means? Faith is trusting in what you cannot see because of what you can see. Let me say that again. Faith is trusting in what we cannot see because of what we can't see. It sounds a bit confusing, right? But it's okay, not to worry. That's what we're here to learn about today. So here's a question for you. Can you remember the last time when your parents took you uh, to church, either driving or on the bus? And were you 100% certain and confident that they knew where they were going? Can you think of a time where your parents might have gone lost on the road? And how were you feeling in that moment? Do you remember how you felt? Sometimes our parents get lost on the road, and that's okay. And sometimes we get lost too. And here's a secret for you. I sometimes even get lost here in the church, but don't tell anyone. I asked you guys to think about getting lost because sometimes following Jesus can feel like that. We don't really know where we're going, 
And sometimes obeying Jesus can feel a little bit confusing too. But I bet when your parents get lost, you're not all that scared because you know that your parents will find their way home with you. So here's the basic truth for this lesson. Faith is when we can trust God no matter what. Even when things seem a bit confusing, or when we get lost and we can't fully understand his plan, we, we can trust that he is always for us. Now, listen to what the apostles Paul wrote about Jesus in his letters to the Colossians. And that's found in Colossians 1.17. Let me just get there. Before everything was created, he was already there. He holds everything together. Now let's focus on the one who holds everything together. For today's Bible story, Let's take a few minutes and watch this video. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 1 through 9. If anyone was set up for the good life, it was Saul of Tarsus. Greetings. Though Saul's family was Jewish, he was also born a Roman citizen. Throughout his life, he was known by two different names. You may call me Saul or Paul. As a young man, Saul was sent to Jerusalem to study with the famous Rabbi Gamaliel. Let's see. You have achieved 100% in classical literature, 111% in philosophy, and in ethics, 99%. Oh, oh, I vow to do better. Saul became a Pharisee like his father before him. He carefully studied God's law and prayed three times a day. Dear God, help me follow your laws 100% perfectly. Like the other religious leaders in Jerusalem, though, Saul was caught off guard by the events that surrounded the life and death of Jesus. Good riddance. Now that fool can't try to overturn God's laws anymore. Haven't you heard? Jesus' followers says he's returned to life. They've seen Jesus? They've seen Jesus. <laughs> Ah, oh, those riffraff will slink away soon enough. Against all odds, the followers of Jesus didn't fade away. In fact, the numbers began to grow. 5,000? You're telling me that 5,000 people are following the way of a dead man? Well, technically, they think he's alive. Ugh, not helping. The religious leaders in Jerusalem did everything they could to squash the new movement. They even arrested a leader among the Jesus followers named Stephen. After telling lies about him, they dragged him outside the city. This man is a disgrace. Saul stood by and held the coats of the men who picked up stones and threw them at Stephen until they killed him. If Stephen had just let go of this Jesus nonsense, he wouldn't have had to die. It's terrible. I hear people are following the way of Jesus in other cities too. What? Inconceivable! Saul quickly became known for hunting down people who believed in Jesus. When he discovered that some Jews in Damascus were following Jesus, he went straight to the high priest. Ah, uh, this Jesus thing is spreading everywhere. I'm aware. They think he's alive. Hashtag, yup. Someone should do something. I hope you have something constructive to say. Give me letters to the synagogues in Damascus so I can arrest all the believers and bring them back here. Now you're talking. Saul set off for Damascus with the blessing of the high priest. He traveled with a group of men to arrest the believers they found. After days on the road, they neared the city. There it is. We'll make it by lunch. No, we must take time to pray. As he did three times every day, Saul stopped and turned to Jerusalem to pray. 
certain God was on his side. Dear Lord, help me to catch every single one of those despicable Jesus people. Suddenly, a light more brilliant than the midday sun blazed down around Saul. He staggered, fell to the ground, squeezing his eyes shut against the glare. Saul, Saul, why are you opposing me? Saul gasped. It felt as though the whole earth shifted beneath him. Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus. I am the one you are opposing. The men around Saul stared in horror and confusion, unable to speak. They could see no one, but heard a sound, perhaps like a roar of thunder. Now get up and go into the city. There you will be told what you must do. Saul reeled. He struggled to his feet and finally opened his eyes. He saw nothing, only darkness. What? What's happened? You tell us. We saw the light, and you fell, and this sound, and then you said- I can't see. What? I can't see. I've been blinded. Uh, that's not good. Here, take my hand. Saul grasped the man's hand and shuffled a few steps forward. Who are you talking to? I, I think, I think it was Jesus. You heard Jesus? I heard Jesus. Saul's companions led him into Damascus, where he stayed at the home of a man named Judas on Straight Street. Uh, want something to eat? I'm not hungry. Or water? Not thirsty. For three days, Saul wrestled with himself and God. He'd come face to face with the very man he knew was dead, but discovered that Jesus was very much alive. Now blind, Saul was forced to see everything in a brand new light. Saul thought that he knew the truth, but he came, to fa he came face to face with Jesus, a man he knew, where he thought he knew, was completely dead. But then he discovered that Jesus was very much alive. What a shock it must have been. Even though Saul could not see, he was blind and everything was pitch black for him. It was like he saw everything in a whole new way about Jesus. How? Because knowing Jesus changes the way we see everything. God opens our eyes too in lots of different ways and help us to look at our lives from his point of view. For example, when you know Jesus, you might see the things that seem really bad right now could be used for something good. If you have watched the news with your parents lately, you might have heard that there's lots of chaos happening all around. People have been getting sick, there's violence all around, and, and also lots of protests happening. People are hurt and confused. And from our point of view, all of this can seem really bad right now. But what if Jesus sees it differently? How can all of this be used for something good? Saul couldn't see anything anymore. And everything that he knew were completely changed because he encountered Jesus. He met Jesus. It's almost like he put on some Jesus glasses. And, um, and now he can see the whole world through Jesus' eyes. Because of faith, we know that Jesus changes the way we see our family, friends, community, people at school, people that you don't really like and the whole world and beyond. Jesus appeared to Saul in a bright light. And later on, we find out in the same chapters in Acts um, that God spoke to Ananias in a vision. Sometimes God speaks to us in, or through different experiences. 
Like maybe you're out in the park on a sunny day and you notice how beautiful God has created the world and you feel closer to him just because everything that he's created is so beautiful. Or maybe you hear a song about God that teaches you something new about him. Where you might have a friend who always shows God's love to you. We all experience God in different ways. And the better we get to know him means knowing Jesus changes the way we see everything. And if knowing Jesus means um, that he changes the way we see everything, then how can we know Jesus? How do you come to find to know Jesus? What ways does Jesus speak to you? Is it through music? Through dancing? Through nature? I love the mountains. I find Jesus all the time when I'm hiking up in the mountains. It's like putting on these googly eyes again. For those around me, they might think I look silly, or that I can't see much uh, with these glasses on, these lovely glasses on. And that's kind of the point. When we put on Jesus' glasses, to the world around us, it might seem like we're very silly. But having faith is knowing that what we see that may seem silly to the outside world is through Jesus' eyes, and that's not silly at all. Jesus changes the way we see the world differently. And because he sees the world differently, so should we. Let me pray for you kids. Um, oh God, we thank you for your goodness and mercy, Lord. We thank you for who you are. For you are an amazing God and you speak to us so differently. Oh Jesus, help us to know you more so that we can see the things that you see and have your eyes and put on our Jesus glasses. Lord Jesus, we ask that you will allow us to have mercy and compassion and that you will build our faith so that in trusting what we cannot see because of what we can see, that we can know you even though we cannot see you in all the, t in all the time, um, but that we still know of who you are. God, we thank you for allowing us to have googly eyes and silly glasses. Um, and we just ask that you allow us to have them on every day. Allow us to really know you well, Lord. We thank you and we love you and we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we end, kids, let us receive today's benediction. Reading from Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. We'll see you next week.